I'm Peggy Peck, MedPage Today, reporting from Chicago at the RSNA meeting, where a small study suggests that the use of brachiotherapy, partial breast irradiation, may be an effective treatment for women who develop breast cancer after breast augmentation surgery, as we hear here. You might ask, well, what's the big to do? Well, let me tell you, there is a very significant problem that's developing in that young women who had silicone or saline implants 10, 15, 20 years ago are now growing into the age where they're starting to develop breast cancer. And uh, the number of women who have these implants is skyrocketing. In fact, it's one-third of my practice right now in Scottsdale. One in eight of these women, just like the general population of women, will develop breast cancer in their lifetime. So our hypothesis in my study was that brachytherapy delivers pinpoint radiation therapy to the involved portion of the breast, not the whole breast, without exposing the silicone or saline implant or other normal tissues to comprehensive radiation. And the way we do this, I'm going to show you, we place thin plastic catheters completely surrounding the surgical lumpectomy site. Then radioactive seeds the size of pencil lead are positioned precisely within these catheters to eradicate any stray cancer cells after the lumpectomy and decrease the local recurrence rate. And since uh, the radiation is given on the inside, not only is it better tolerated, but it's also a five-day treatment instead of the traditional whole breast radiation, which tends to be six and a half weeks of radiation therapy, approximately 33 treatments. Well, we have a template with pre-drilled holes that compresses the breast tissue. So in applying these two paddles, I pull the breast tissue up, separating the breast tissue from the augmentation implant, and apply the template. In radiology, this is called Eklund views for mammography in women with augmented breast, or pushback views. Well, I've applied the same concept to therapeutic radiology and using these paddles to separate the breast tissue from the augmentation. We then obtain a CT scan of the breast with the paddles attached. And you, can, and you can see on the treatment monitor that with three-dimensional software, the implant, the lumpectomy cavity, and the target breast tissue are visualized and can be color-coded. Catheters are then inserted through the proper holes in the template in order to cover the target volume but miss the augmentation. So the study that I'm presenting at the RSNA session is 70 women consecutively treated with nobody excluded, with augmentation mammoplasty who presented to me for treatment of their early stage breast cancer. The treatment was given with the internal radiation from June of 2003 to June of 2008. The median follow-up is over two years in this population with up to five years of follow-up. There's been no breast or regional lymphatic recurrences to date. This has been a very effective treatment. The cosmetic results have been uh, quite uh, superb, especially when you compare it with the whole breast radiation, in that 91% of the time, we cannot tell which breast has been treated. The, bre the breast has the same size and shape as the other breast. If there's a mild asymmetry, the results, 9% uh, of the patients had mild asymmetry or a good cosmetic outcome, and 0% had significant deformity or an unacceptable cosmetic outcome. But 26 months is a short period of time in the world of breast cancer. What are the long-term possibilities? I am very confident because of the non-augmented studies, which I have, I'm not showing here at RSNA, we now have patients 18 years out from the treatment. Uh, we have 10-year outcomes published from my center and others that have shown uh, a very low 4% recurrence rate in the breast, which uh, in selected, these selected patients is uh, at least as good as the whole breast radiation, if not better. So promising results, but from a small study with short follow-up. In Chicago at RSNA, I'm Peggy Peck. MedPage today.